Hey everybody, it's your girl Tara Michelle. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel, Opinionated Scents. Our safe space to discuss all things fragrance, whether we like them or not. So today, I have to talk about the elephant in the room first. There's two of them. One, I got caught in the rain, so my hair is a travesty. I'll do it later. Two, this bright coral lipstick that a certain cousin of mine here on YouTube told me to get when I was on her live. Mm, I told you I cannot pull this off. I look like Casper the Friendly Ghost. Whatever little tan I thought I was accumulating, please. This is a nightmare. I didn't even throw any lip liner on. I'm not even trying to salvage it or save it. I don't even know how it looks. I didn't even use a mirror. I was looking at my phone. But still, we're going to rock it in this video. Maybe next time I play with it, I definitely need some type of darker liner. This, like, mm-mm. Anyway, let's jump right into this video. Today, we are going to discuss all things lemon. To start off, we're going to go with one of the best. One of the best. Um, if you like citrus fragrances, you probably own this. This is Chanel Chance Eau Fresh. So from the house of Chanel, the Chance line is pretty much it for me. I love Eau Tendre, EDP and EDT. I love Eau Fresh and I love Eau Vive. So this opens up with lemon and citron and it's just an amazing zesty burst of energy. There's also iris and water hyacinth, um, jasmine, of course, um, but the jasmine is not super loud in this. The citruses are just so good in this. Um, and then there's also some pink pepper and some teak wood. This, I think I'll always have this in my collection. I cannot see myself living somewhere where there is a full blown summer season and Eau Fresh not being in my collection. That feels wrong to me. So again, Chanel Chance Eau Fresh. Next up is a fragrance that I do not think gets enough love here on YouTube. That is MAC Turquatic. I love this fragrance. So this opens up with beautiful water notes. Again, that just always makes me giggle. Watery notes, water notes, woody notes. Go ahead and keep your secrets to yourself, that's fine. Um, there's Amalfi Lemons, there's Lotus, there's Virginia Cedar, there's Oris Root. Um, there's something else in here that I never remember. It's like a really weird word that reminds me of amoeba, I think. But yeah, okay. So what you get in this though is the water notes, the Amalfi Lemon, the Lotus, and the Virginia Cedar. Those are the most prominent notes in here. And so for me, again, this is another one just like Chanel Chance Eau Fresh, where if you have high heat summers, this is so refreshing. It's so refreshing. The lemon is so beautiful and it takes it from being just an ordinary run-of-the-mill aquatic fragrance and gives it a loud burst of energy with the zest from the lemon. So um, I tend to feel like, and it could just be in my head, but the fragrances that I love with um, the most potency with their lemon notes tend to have Amalfi lemon. Not always. There are still some regular lemons that are super potent. Um, but for some reason, I'm starting to see that Amalfi lemon in a lot of my perfumes where lemon is just all up in your face. Next up, we're going to talk about a fragrance that has a ton of notes. We're talking Sicilian lemon. There's pomegranate, two different types of jasmine. There's peony. There's ambroxan. There's sandalwood. There's musk. There's woody notes. There's all kinds of stuff in this fragrance. We're talking about Versace Eros Eau de Parfum. Now, this fragrance has been getting a lot of hate. Everybody loves the EDT more because it's fruitier. And all of a sudden, this one was deemed obsolete when at first we all loved it. However, this isn't a zesty, in-your-face, pungent, super citrusy lemon. There's too many notes going on in here. This is more of a light, bright, energetic, happy lemon that is perfectly fine sharing the spotlight with everything else. I think the lemon and the musk in this are my favorite things about the fragrance. So again, that's Versace Eros or the Parfum. Next up, we have a fragrance from the House of Fresh. This is called Brown Sugar. I know what you're thinking. Why is this on the lemon list, right? 
Mm. The opening is a stunning combo of lemon and tangerine. There's so much in this though. Now you get to the brown sugar part with the caramel and amber and the dry down and the base of it with some cypress. So, but that opening, mm, lemon and tangerine. You also have some red berries in here. You have some peach, you have sugar, you have magnolia and honeysuckle. This is just a, a beautiful fragrance. The ingredient list alone is just stunning and the juice follows suit. But that opening, guys, it just hit me. I was like, what? Because when, when I see brown sugar, I'm not thinking lemon and tangerine, but I'm okay with that because this is the furthest thing from linear. You start off with the burst of citrus, move into the sweet fruity section when you have that sugar, that peach and the red berries. And then, like I said, the magnolia and the honeysuckle. And then you get to that caramel, that amber, that cypress, baby. Fresh killed the game with this one. This next fragrance is also from the House of Fresh. There's a ton of notes in this one as well. This is Fresh Sugar Lychee. You're going to open up with a Malfi Lemon. You're going to have grapefruit. There's some lotus in here, some lychee in here, some freesia in here, lime blossom. I do believe this also touts sandalwood and amber as well in the base. There's a lot going on in this fragrance. However, that opening that beautiful Amalfi lemon and that grapefruit combo. They, they just know how to do citrus. And I love the fact that that's not even what you end up with. So let's say you start your day off bright and citrusy, but you also want to take this into the nighttime. If you spray it early enough before the end of your workday, let's say you're going for drinks at five or six o'clock, spray this around three, you'll be well into that base, which calms down. It becomes a little more sensual and sexy with that amber. I love these two. I love these two. Um, I'm going to start wearing them more. Again, they're newer to my collection, but I'm kind of scared to because I believe I paid 50 bucks for one ounce, like a 30 milliliter, which is kind of expensive, but they're worth it. If I'm being honest, if you got it, you might want to look into these. If you like a non-linear beautiful burst of citrus in the opening with a little bit of sensuality on that back end, you know? Again, that's fresh sugar lychee. I have talked about this next fragrance so many times on my channel, I have lost count. Of course, I'm talking about Because It's You from the house of Emporio Armani. So the lemon and raspberry combo in this, I cannot get enough of. On my skin, it pulls like the best apple note. I just, I don't get it because there's no apple in here. You have vanilla, you have musk, you have um, amberwood, you have rose. This is just a really, really pretty fragrance. It's an easy reach for me. Look at the dents. I've been wearing this, y'all. And I wore it for like a week straight earlier this year. It is very much a universal fragrance, which means you can wear it in all seasons. I wear this no matter how it feels outside, if I'm craving it. I do love this fragrance. But that lemon and raspberry combo, they just do something together magical on my skin. And from the bottle today, man, I'm picking up that lemon and raspberry combo. It's just... It's beautiful. I love this fragrance. I will always love this fragrance. I heard a rumor that it was discontinued, which of course, somebody's always discontinuing the best fragrances, but on a simplistic level for a designer fragrance, and I, I hate to even say that because it puts like a negative connotation on it, but this is a very easy reach for me. I don't have to think twice about wearing this. I have to make myself stop wearing it. So again, that's Because It's You from Emporio Armani. Next up, we have an Inspired by Fragrance from the House of Dua. This is inspired by Maison Francis Kirk Dijon's Aqua Universalis Forte, or maybe it's just Fort. It is with an E, so who knows? This is called Aqua Bravata. This is a beautiful bergamot and lemon opening. There's a lot going on in this fragrance. Dua loves to add their notes. This is a white floral fragrance. It's super crisp and clean with a burst of beautiful citrus energy this is an easy reach all day every day this is jeans and t-shirt this is i'm going to brunch i'm running errands you're just going to smell beautiful and clean this is oh i love this fragrance and i've never smelled the original 
um, but I know the prices of Maison Francis Kirk Dijon's uh, perfumes as well. So I'll stick with this one. This one I see me having in my collection for a while because it is just a super easy, breezy, um, citrus clean reach. Like you don't have to think about it. You know, you just want to chill that day. You're not trying to be, you know, too much or too little. This is it. It meets you perfectly in the middle. And the longevity, all freaking day. And again, you're going to keep smelling it on your clothes until you wash them. So this is a keeper. Next up, we have another Dua inspired by fragrance. This is inspired by Zerjoff's Herba Gold. This is called Pure Gold Nectar. Baby, this opens up with Sicilian Orange, Sicilian Lemon, Calabrian Bergamot. It's everything. The lemon note in this is made louder because of the orange. I think the juiciness in the orange. Oh, and the bergamot. Just that little sour touch that it brings. It just makes me happy. I love bergamot. And yes, that list is coming too. So um, this also has fruity notes and amber accord in it. I think there's musk. There's a lot going on in here. But this vibes like uh, Jasmine Wisp from Razazzi, and it also vibes like Juicy Flowers from Mansara, but I actually like this one more. I am obsessed with this. I think that this is one of my favorite from Dua, 100% one of my favorite, and I just, I look forward to wearing this all summer. I look forward to having to repurchase this because I run through this bottle. The staying power, the lasting power, the longevity, the sillage, uh amazing i cannot say enough about pure gold nectar i've also never smelled the original but i also know zerjoff's prices so again i'll stick with dua this next fragrance is quite possibly my favorite citrus leaning flanker in the dolce and gabbana light blue series this is none other than dolce and gabbana light blue sun this is a beautiful fragrance the musk in here i think it's white musk is amazing there's also bourbon vanilla in here and ambergris for those of you who are like me and love those notes but this opens up with lemon frangipani white rose and cedar you get all those immediately and that white musk i'm telling you you get the bourbon vanilla and the ambergris closer to the end you know what no i smell the ambergris now but the, i love ambergris but yes, bourbon vanilla is not the star of this guy. So don't seek this out for that. It's there, but it's not a star in this. I'm telling you, the lemon, the white musk, the ambergris, the, the white rose, the frangipani, the cedar, all of those things just come at you right out of the bottle. I, I kind of love that about it. It just gives you all of the different faces of its personality. I can dig that because I'm the same way. You know, those people who are just authentically themselves so that you're never shocked by what you get from them. <laughs> so again, the lemming in the opening. Did I say the lemming? What? Is that a fish or a bird? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So which one is it though? Like, can't you get like some, why do I always get sidetracked in videos? A lemming. No, that's herring. A herring is what I'm talking about. So it's a lemming, a bird. Is it even a word? Why are we having this conversation? Okay, back to the perfume. Unbelievable. And I have to leave it in. I just got to talking about being authentically yourself, right? What was I talking about? Oh, yes. This fragrance is amazing. The longevity is much better than the original. And I do not like the intense version of light blue. So um, this is definitely my favorite of the citrus leaning flankers. I need to go over my whole collection of those because there are a couple of gems in there that I never hear anybody talking about on YouTube. So again, this is a light blue sun, beautiful, strong, pungent lemon. That is because of that cedar and that white musk just filtering through that lemon, making it louder, more potent. I really do enjoy this. And this is, I think, an EDT, although it performs much better. Yeah, I think all of them are. Um, but this one, again, performs so much better than so many of the other ones. That Italian Zest one, be careful with that one if you're thinking about getting it. While it smells absolutely stunning, and I really should have had it on this list, the longevity is like 20 minutes. So no, 
I'm not doing it. I'm not recommending that anyone go and purchase it. So again, this is Light Blue Sun. That took a twist. Next up, we're going to talk about a fragrance that seems to have YouTube torn. Either you love it or you hate it. Well, I love it. What am I talking about? I'm talking about Valentino's Born in Roma Yellow Dream. This touts three notes, lemon, rose, and white musk. Baby, when I tell you that this is a musk that is so strong and potent, if you are not part of the musk gang, don't even do yourself like this. If you suffer or struggle with any issues regarding musk, do not do this to yourself. Because what the musk does with the rose is kind of off-putting if you are not here for both of those notes in their entirety, okay? Seriously. However, the lemon in this, the lemon in this is exquisite. And I love how it blends with the rose and the musk. Now, the lemon does not stay all the way through on the end for me when I don't top this up. But if I top up at like the three to four hour mark, I get to sit with that lemon throughout the entirety of the day because I've given it a second dose. However, I I just really love the rose and musk in this too. But I don't know. It's something about just this whole thing that just speaks to me. I really enjoy this fragrance. Even though the lemon doesn't stay all the way through for me. And again, it it I shouldn't say it doesn't. It's there, but it's super light. I like how pungent and potent it is. So I want to smell it again. It doesn't just completely disappear, which happens in a lot of citruses. I think the reason it stays around as long as it does, just closer to your skin, is because of the musk. The musk is making it all stay around for a very long time. I still like to top up though, because it's what I do. But I only spray two sprays on the top up. I probably spray about six sprays before I leave the house. Throw this in my purse, even though it's big and chunky, my, my purse is huge and I barely have anything in it. But this is a beautiful fragrance, guys. Please get your nose on it and tell me what you think. If you've already smelled it, even if you didn't like it, just let me know. I, I definitely want to talk about this one in the comments because I've literally seen it split. People seriously either hate this or love it. I haven't e seen anyone say, you know, oh, it's okay. They're like, yes or absolutely not. In all honesty, I'm pretty sure that at this point, I am subconsciously saving my favorite for last. It's happened way too many times in these videos to be just a coincidence. So I'm talking about none other than Lemon Island from Atelier Cologne. This came out either earlier this year or at the end of last year. And it is just, they tout three notes, guys. They say there's lemon, there's Indian Jasmine, and there's Madagascar Vanilla. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. I want a full bottle of it. Um, I went through two travel sizes and uh, listen, I, I don't know what to say. This is like a grown and sexy citrus, which you don't hear people say that often. But I have to tell you the type of lemon that they use in this, that Indian jasmine, like I just feel like that is just one of those hearty jasmines but in a smooth and sensual way, meaning the longevity on this is much better than a lot of other Atelier citrus heavy colognes. The citruses just don't last that long. Great quality, it's really expensive, $80 for one ounce, you know, but I digress. However, this one lasts all day on me. The lemon gets a little lighter, so of course I do top it up. But that Indian Jasmine and that Madagascar Vanilla, baby, this is, mm, they put their foot in this one, okay? For anyone who's never heard that saying before, it said a lot with regard to like cooking greens or, you know, Southern food. Um, yeah, soul food as we call it. When you put your foot in it, it's not being literal. It just means that you killed the game. You did an excellent job making whatever you were making. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I have to have an Ebonics breakdown, you know? But um. Lemon Island from Atelier Cologne is absolutely beautiful. If you don't mind splurging a little bit, then I would suggest getting a one ounce or maybe even one of the travel sizes when they have a sale. This is a good one. Those are my top 10, 11, favorite lemon notes currently in my collection. 
Thank you guys for spending time with me today and watching my video. You know I want to see you in the comments. There's so much to discuss. And of course, you have to drop your favorite lemon fragrance. I'm making a list of these suggestions per these notes. I'm going to start shopping eventually. And I'm telling y'all, some of these I have to get my hands on. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do. I'd love to have you be a part of the family. If you have already subscribed, click the like button and select the notification bell so that you never miss any of my future uploads. And if you've done all of those things, thank you. I appreciate you. You're helping my family to grow. Welcome to the Terra Squad. Or if you've already been here, what up? <laughs> Until then, guys.